Right, okay, so we are discussing the activation of the nuclear factor of activated T cells. So if calcium goes up in the cytoplasm of a cell with the nuclear factor of activated T cells, then calcium is going to bind to the four calcium binding sites of calmodulin to create us a calcium calmodulin complex. The calcium calmodulin complex is then capable of binding to uh, the calcineurin enzyme here. So let's show the calcium calmodulin complex bound here. It binds to calcineurin and it activates calcineurin. So calcineurin is now going to become activated now that the calcium calmodulin complex is bound to it. Calcineurin is what is known as a serine threonine phosphatase. So a serine threonine phosphatase, which means that it is capable of removing phosphate groups from serine and threonine residues which have been phosphorylated. So it's a serine threonine phosphatase. It will break this bond between the phosphate group and the uh, serine residue, or in threonine residue, but in this case, serine is the relevant residue. Um, now, um, basically, that's a hydrolysis reaction. When you forged this link between the phosphate group and the serine residue, you took water out. To, and that was a condensation reaction. Now, when you cleave the bond between the serine residue and the phosphate group, what you will have to do is put water back in, and therefore it's a hydrolysis reaction. Hydro for water, lysis for splitting apart. You're splitting these two molecules apart. Okay, now, um, so calcineurin is capable of catalyzing this hydrolysis reaction, and basically it's going to... Um, break off these phosphate groups off the serine residues of the serine-rich region of the nuclear factor of activated T-cells. So what's going to happen is this nuclear factor is going to have the phosphate groups cleaved off it. So it's now gone bare. So here is the serine-rich region now with no phosphate groups on it. And what happens when you remove those phosphate groups is the nuclear factor of activated T-cells changes conformation to make available a new domain, basically. So a new domain becomes available, it becomes exposed. And this basically is the nuclear import domain. Okay? And uh, this domain, this nuclear import domain, targets the nuclear factor of activated T cells to the nucleus. So what now happens is once you've removed these phosphate groups from the nuclear factor of activated T, t cells serine rich region, then what's going to happen is it's going to translocate into the nucleus, and it's because it now has this available uh, exposed nuclear import domain. Okay, right, so once the nuclear factor of activated T cells is now in the nucleus, it's now said, to be, it's now instead denoted N fat with a little n at the bottom to denote that it's now in the nucleus. Okay, and when it goes into the nucleus, it's going to, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to act as a transcription factor and also as a transcriptional co-activator. Now, what's the difference between a transcription factor and a transcriptional co-activator? So I'll write them both down. Transcription factor and transcription co-activator. Uh, transcription factor and transcription co-activator. So a transcription factor, let's start with that one. A transcription factor is um, something uh, which binds to uh, promoter regions of genes. So if this is a piece of DNA here, then uh, portions of the DNA are what are known as genes. And uh, these are the portions that are, um, are uh, transcribed and then translated into protein. But there are also regions upstream of the gene, known as promoter regions. So this is a promoter region. Now, basically, if you want to express your gene, if you want to make the um, gene product of that gene, then you need the necessary enzymes which are going to transcribe the DNA to bind to that DNA. So you need some portion of DNA uh, which is designed to recruit the necessary enzymes over here so that they can then transcribe this gene. Okay, so that's what the promoter region is for. It's for where, for it's where the enzymes that are going to transcribe this gene, such as the RNA polymerase enzyme, is going to dock. It's going to first bind to the promoter region and then it's going to start transcribing this gene. 
Okay, so the idea of a transcription factor is that it's a molecule which can bind to this promoter region and change the excuse me and change the affinity of this um, promoter region for the RNA polymerase. So therefore, it can change how much uh, you transcribe this gene and therefore how much mRNA you produce from this gene and therefore how much protein you make of this gene. So transcription factors bind to promoter regions and alter the expression of genes. So what's a transcriptional coactivator? Well, basically, transcriptional coactivators bind to transcription factors and change which promoter regions they are going to bind to and what effect they're going to have on those promoter regions. So if this is our transcription factor here, so I'll colour it in in both pictures so that we can recognise it. So in blue is a transcription factor, then a transcriptional co-activator is, go, is a molecule which will bind to the transcription factor and alter which promoter regions it binds to and therefore which, um, which genes it increases the expression of. So what colour should I draw the transcriptional co-activator in? I think orange. Okay, so this is the transcriptional co-activator. Right, NFAT is not a particularly powerful transcription factor. Instead, it's far better as a transcriptional co-activator. And the transcription factors which it affects are uh, usually the CFOS, CJUN di heterodimers, basically. So CFOS and CJUN are, are two transcription factors which often form heterodimers. So one of them will be a CFOS transcription factor, and one of them will be a CJUN transcription factor. And they bind together to make a di heterodimer, and that then acts as the transcription factor which will actually bind to the promoter regions of DNA. And basically, uh, the nuclear factor of activated T cells binds to that heterodimer and affects which genes it's going to increase the transcription of. Okay, right, so there's the mechanism by which uh, we activate the nuclear factor of activated T cells. In the next video, what we'll look is at um, is how uh, we um, activate the nuclear factor kappa B.